Norm, I, you know, for people who've been following this, there's been an interesting evolution. There were particularly some Democrats, including Jamie Raskin, who earlier, when th this vote was first taken, voted against the expulsion of, of uh, Congressman Santos because he said, we don't really want to have emotions uh, guiding how we do things that are that important in Congress, especially when you expel someone who is not answerable to you. They're answerable to their constituents. So he wanted to hear the evidence from the Ethics Committee. You, like a lot of Americans, were skeptical that the Ethics Committee would sort of do its job because sometimes it just doesn't in Congress. Tell me how that all unfolded. So the Ethics Committee, the best word I could use for its performance over the last number of years is feckless. It rarely takes action against other members and often divides along partisan lines. When the Ethics Committee issued this report unanimously, and a scathing report built on evidence of fraud and misuse of campaign funds and serial wrongdoing by George Santos. It went way beyond, you know, his own lying about his identity and his background. That changed things. Jamie, I rarely disagree with, and I don't in this case. He was right in the first instance that you want to be careful about turning expulsion into a tool that you use more regularly than it has in the past. It's a very powerful weapon. But in this case, yes, it was the right thing to do. And one thing I should note, Ali, is that I'm hearing a lot of talk. Well, we've never expelled anybody who has not been convicted of a crime. The three Confederates who were expelled around the time of the Civil War weren't convicted of anything. They were flat out insurrectionists trying to destroy the Union. And that's why we ought to take a look at some of the Republicans in Congress who are flat out insurrectionists and tried to destroy the Union. Uh, Glenn Ivey, you were one of the people on the uh, on the ethics panel that and 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 wrote this stuff, and it, it definitely blew people's minds. I don't know what they were expecting. I don't know what you were expecting to write. Uh, and I and I do want to hear your your take on what uh, Norm just said about the fact that some people felt that the standard for expelling him should be uh, criminality. In fact, that's what George Santos himself said in his defense. He said, "I've been convicted of nothing." Yeah, I think that's right. We had a number of people, um, even in today's vote, who felt that uh, they couldn't vote in favor of expulsion because he hadn't been convicted of a crime. But the point that I tried to make was that the Constitution doesn't require that. Uh, you know, it's a two-thirds vote is the only requirement in the Constitution. We don't have to wait until uh, a member's been remanded to the Bureau of Prisons before we can vote him out of the House of Representatives for this level of misconduct. And I think the other points to make, you know, as Norm mentioned, it was unanimous, it was bipartisan, the report coming out of the Ethics Committee. I think the other piece to, that we should note here is that there was really no dispute with respect to the findings that we made. Mr. Santos made, uh, gave a lot of interviews, made a lot of statements, um, you know, press conferences, just statements on the floor even. But he never challenged any of the factual allegations that we raised in the report or for that matter, that were raised in the indictment. So essentially, the findings were undisputed, and I think that led a lot of people uh, to change their votes from where they'd been in the last vote. The last thing I heard, too, was, and I wasn't aware of this until recently, but apparently there was a Republican member, member who was a victim of the uh, you know, credit card scams that Mr. Santos was uh, involved in yep. and sent an email to his Republican colleagues to let them know that. That's a pretty powerful uh, affirmation of the, uh, the the report that we issued. Yeah, he said he and his mother were uh, were done out of uh, some money by George Santos. It's, it's, it's a remarkable read, the Ethics Committee report. Uh, Norm, you made a point about the fact that the reason you agreed with uh, with people like Rang, uh, Raskin and, and on both counts is that expulsion from the House is serious. And that's sort of hard to express to people because a lot of people are frustrated with what goes on in the House of Representatives and they're not sure how effective it is. But this is important. People have a right to be represented there and represented well. I want to play for you what Speaker Mike Johnson said because he's sort of making the point that Republicans are the ones who take all these serious things seriously. Democrats are the ones who weaponize them. Listen to what he said. I served on President Trump's impeachment defense team twice. And we lamented openly and we decried how the Democrats politicized that process. They were brazenly political and how they, they brought those uh, meritless impeachment charges against the, the president. This, what you're seeing here, is exactly the opposite. We are the rule of law team. The Republican Party stands for the rule of law. 
Kind of made my eyes bug out a little bit, uh, Norm. <laughs> Uh, you know, Mike Johnson uh, is uh, not going to go down as one of the better speakers of the, of the House, and he is not wearing well in his short time in office. Of course, the impeachments of Donald Trump, both of which were joined by some Republicans, were built on a very strong base of knowledge uh, and of facts. And, and it's pretty clear that Mitch McConnell almost joined in the Senate with the uh, conviction in the second impeachment. Didn't do so because he feared it would divide his own Republican base. But, you know, there's one other point here that's worth making, uh, Ali, and that is uh, censure is the next level of punishment in the House. And it used to be really serious. If you are censured, which takes a majority, you have to go into the well of the House and the charges against you are read. It's humiliating. Well, we've defined deviancy down, and what Republicans did was not the rule of law when they censured Adam Schiff. They censured Adam Schiff because he had been too effective in the impeachment of Donald Trump. So they've debased uh, censure, and that doesn't leave a lot of additional punishments. And we have to start looking in a different way at what we can do when members go over the line. And they're going to go over the line now, it's very clear, with an attempted impeachment of Joe Biden, which yep. itself is utterly meritless.